getting an early start today. It is 6.30 in the morning, and this is going to be a little bit different of an adventure. I had some last minute changes uh, to my plans. I'm doing what I call a turn and burn, where I was gone last week on a trip, went to work, and this weekend I'm heading back out already. So I had the trailer all ready to rock out, load it up, but last minute I had a buddy that had some time off that said he needed to get out and do some camping, so some company is always welcome. I decided not to take the trailer today because I have also been on the other end of the not having a nice cozy trailer while out camping stick. <laughs> so I felt it would be a little rude to have this nice trailer while I made my buddy go sleep outside in his tent. So we're going to go back to the roots on this one and uh, go back to the times before I had a nice fancy schmancy trailer and we're going to tent camp. It's a nice cool morning, it's about 66 degrees, and uh, we're going to be heading about four hours up into California to a place I've been wanting to go for a long time, and it's been almost impossible to get into, even on my odd days off. Trying to pair two nights together is pretty tough, especially in one of these uh, cooler campgrounds. I think it could quite possibly be one of the most highly visited parks around so <clears throat> we'll see how that goes I'm really curious to see what the huge draw of this is other than it being just nice desert it's been a long time since I've crossed the state line but right now I'm heading on over to pick up my good buddy Tuco in some of my older videos I referred to him as the hardtail gangster because he likes to ride a hardtail mountain bike He's also one of my good camping buddies, and uh, he doesn't say a whole lot, so that's why he's always welcome on these trips. He's nice and quiet. Man of many words, I'll tell you what. <laughs> but look at that sunrise today out here in the desert southwest. Now, as always, I check my weather reports a couple weeks out up until the date, and usually they're fairly accurate. It looks like Monday might get kind of interesting here. So uh, that should be real fun. We'll see how it goes. Time to play Tacoma Tetris back here. Cooler takes up too much room. Let's go. See if you can slide that up that way. I don't know how we uh, did this the last couple trips with all that extra crap. Looks good. Good enough, anyway. Check this can of sardines over here. <laughs> really makes me want to go back to a full-size truck after doing that stuff a few times. Show everybody how we have this thing loaded down. I mean, we've done many trips like this with more gear. I have no idea how we get it in here. So we got my chuck box, ended up bringing the Big Yeti cooler because we got some extra drinks coming. All of our junk back here. You know, these Yetis are nice, but man, they take up too much room. Got all the clothes back here, and I have a portable refrigerator and all my sleeping gear. And now it's time to head out. Should be an interesting trip. We're going to head up to... Uh, Kind of a neat little place, uh, old western movie set. Probably grab some lunch while we're there. And then we'll head on over to camp. And as usual, I'll bring everybody along for the ride. <laughs>
Got to get the burger shot. Dang, man, look at that. Bison burgers. A pretty darn good bison burger at that Pappy and Harriet's. Now it's time to go rob the bank. Well, we just got done having a pretty darn good bison burger at Pappy and Harriet's over in Pioneer Town. It used to be an old western movie set at one time, so that was pretty neat to see. But right now we're about ready to head into Joshua Tree National Park to camp for the weekend. Definitely not as many people here camping as the web page said when I was booking, as usual. Pretty interesting campground though. Very tight parking spots. So I guess I could have done that with the trailer, but kind of a really short odd spot. Let's check the spot out here. Kind of open and nice. Not as cool as some of the other ones down on the rocks, but that's all I could get. I thought I was bringing the trailer and I wasn't, but it kind of works out. Do it the old school way. Pull out the tent. I haven't used this in a year, man. Really? See if it's still together. You always got to find the right hammer rock. I don't know if that was a fire or something just burnt something. I can't believe this thing's still living after 70 years, man. And it was packed in the truck for almost a year. Seven years out of this REI Half Dome 2, it's still going. And I've used this every other weekend straight for the last four years until I got the tab. Tuco over here has the older version, and it's still pretty stout. You can tell the difference in the two. Got a lot more mesh in that one than this one. But I think mine's even outdated now, so I don't even know if they make this model anymore. check see what I got sitting out wide there and then
All right, both tents are fully ready to roll. Now to throw all of our sleeping junk inside. This is self-inflating. But we're going to help this thing out with an inflator. Little flex tail air bed inflator. This thing is super nice. It's kind of like a sleeping bag, but a quilt. And then you can fold this thing up and even wear it if you wanted to. I'm going to put that down first. Open up my climate pillow here. These are pretty cool. They come with their own outside protector. And you unravel the pillow part and shake it into the cotton side. And you roll that back up and roll your cotton edge over. And now you got a really comfortable camp pillow. I'm using an old North Face 20 degree, which may not really even be needed tonight. And that's just going to go over the top. So pretty comfortable sleeping arrangements as far as a two-person tent goes. That's how I've been doing things over the last four years or... Well, my whole life, but that's mainly what I've been using before I got a trailer. It is pretty warm today. It's about 85. I think it's going to cool down to about, what would they say, like 50, high 40s. Tomorrow's another story, though. It's supposed to get pretty windy and dip down about maybe 15, 20 degrees. We're kind of hoping we don't uh, have to pack all this stuff into the truck. Hopefully the wind doesn't take our tents away and uh, we have to resort to sleeping in the back of the truck in the front seat. Even though uh, Tuco here is pretty adept to the desert, you can tell he's starting to break a sweat out here. Should be a pretty nice night overall, I think. We have a special dinner planned. Actually pre-made and pre-packed a lot of this stuff for once. And that should be pretty epic as far as a camp meal goes, I think. As far as fires go, we're not going to have a fire tonight, I don't think. Somebody forgot to bring the firewood. <laughs> Pretty cool area, though. Check out this cooler. I've had this thing for about, I think, five or six years here, maybe seven. Look at all these cool stickers from all the places I've been. Kind of a shame that I really waited till this year to start filming these adventures. I probably lost, I don't know, maybe 150 adventures worth of uh, videos I could have made out of this. Just because uh, I didn't know if I should put it out there on the tube or not. So, but oh well, there's many more to come. Hopefully we can get Tuco out or the hardtail gangster to come along with. We already got some crazy people crawling up the rocks out here. And I'm in a giant pile of rocks and I forgot my RC rock crawler. How stupid. Oh, fancy camp dinner today. Well, I guess I spoke too soon when I said uh, this place was kind of vacant. Apparently we were just a little early. It's starting to fill up now. Pretty cool campground, but it seems like a lot of these spots are kind of geared to tent camping. Not very good for parking, kind of limited for the RV stuff. I'm out here looking for the uh, site host, hoping that they may have some campfire wood because we totally bombed and forgot the wood. <laughs> yeah, many of these spots are pretty tucked back up in here. 
as far as campground camping goes, not really my cup of tea when you're, you know, right next door to your neighbors. Guys jamming that on his guitar. That's a good uh, gauge of size there. Fit in the little Airstream base camp. Most of these sites you got to kind of pull off to the side. If you're really skilled, you could park your tab in a car or truck next to it. But I think that's where uh, I got lucky. We don't have a lot of cool rocks in our spot, but we are away from everybody. And no luck on the firewood. Uh, nothing to do. But crack an ice cold beer. Golden hour. What do you got? IPA? Yeah. Imperial. For the golden hour. And for tonight's dinner, New York style pizza, homemade, out here in Joshua Tree. This time I actually pre-prepped and bagged everything ready to go. Even made my dough up ahead of time. And it's a good thing that Border Patrol and the U.S. Customs didn't stop us at the checkpoint because we may have been held up for a while for that one. <laughs> the fire starter. on there homemade of course a little of the freshest 100% real mozzarella cheese pepperonis Italian sausage And you want some olives? That'll work. Right, now we load this up in the oven. Let's take some skill and some practice right here. Some shaking. And we're in. Alright, we're going to check that. How's that look? That looks pretty good. Let's give that a rotate not sticking so we're good we need to rotate that to keep the cooking even here it's still hot in the back side all right we got a little toasty on the back side because it's the first run but I think overall the rest of this pie is going to be just perfect oh yeah look at that Make sure this thing isn't sticking and we're going to load it here in the oven this takes a lot of practice but you're going to have to do micro shakes until this thing starts sliding off and as it slides off you slowly pull it back and there you go let's take a look on pizza number two it's getting there all right let's see here i think i'm good to go the fire's almost out that looks about perfect And like most things this trip, somebody forgot the pizza cutter. So we're gonna have to improvise with that. Well, 
what's the verdict on this here? Tuco's not a very happy guy. Let's see if we can make him happy. Man of many words. Marking the perimeter just in case or what? <laughs> so we don't fall off a cliff. <laughs> Lots of holes out here in the desert. <laughs> Would have been nice if uh, somebody remembered the firewood. <laughs> it is dark out here tonight. So sometimes when we're out in these ultra dark sky places, we don't like to have a lot of light on. We uh, learn to leave out glow sticks and stuff. That way one of us doesn't fall off a cliff or walk into a cactus. Not that that's been done before. <laughs> the dreaded stink bug. Look at that thing, man. Ready to spray. Well, no firewood, but that little lantern works. <laughs> it's a good thing it's not cold. It does look cold. Everybody's campsite kind of lit up with the rocks. Time to call the night. <sighs> yeah, should be a pretty good sleep. It's not too cold. Been a long time since I've been in the old tent. This way out is going out backwards. Look at that. Not the greatest sleep last night. It got pretty uh, windy on and off, shaking the tent. But the temps were perfect. I didn't even need a sleeping bag or blanket on. The weather's calling for a lot of wind today, possibly. So we'll see how crazy that gets. But how nice is that? You gotta say I picked a good spot because we were far enough away from the rest of the crowd while tent camping, but yet that close to a bathroom house. That is the key to getting a good tent camping spot. It's actually pretty hard to do sometimes, but uh, we got lucky this trip, I guess. Like I was saying, I was gonna bring the tab, but my uh, buddy got some days off, so I decided to just tent camp it. But I think I may have been able to fit the tab here and the truck next to it, but this thing is pretty sloped. A lot of these spots are a little weird. Like, I don't even think this one really even has a driveway. I think you're supposed to park right next to it or maybe back right into it. I'm not sure, but it's not much room. 
And for today's gourmet breakfast, I'm just going to go ahead and show you the before and then the after because it's a little windy and it's a little tricky to do out here today. So we got some hash browns, some bacon, some sausage, some country gravy, and tortillas. And I'm not sure if it's really called a cowboy breakfast burrito, but I was at a place one time where they had a burrito like that and uh, it was absolutely awesome. So we're going to do those today. All right, our bacon, sausage, hash browns are about done. Our gravy's warm. Tortillas are cooked. Now it's just time to add in some eggs. And of course, we're going to add a little of the trail dust since we're camping to the eggs. I'll tell you what, these are not authentic tortillas. Take a little egg. Take a little bit of our country gravy. Take some of our hash browns. Definitely some delicious bacon. And some of our sausage chunks. We're gonna to try to roll this thing up. It's gonna be a mess, I think. That makes a pretty hearty breakfast burrito, I'll tell you what. See how that thing came out. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, the winds are definitely picking up today. I'm trying to hold this as still as possible, but I mean, we can actually watch this cloud moving. It's crazy. We decided to stop being lazy today and go for a little nature hike out here around camp. It's a little windy, especially down this uh, canyon. So I think the audio might be a little messed up, but it is what it is. And if we come across any snakes, I'll show you those too. You got your typical Choya cactus. I'm not sure what type that is. Pretty nasty little guys. Creosote bushes. If you throw those in a fire and let them smolder and stand in the smoke, you can use it as a uh, natural uh, deodorant antiseptic, I think, maybe. And this right here is what I think you call a Christmas tree cactus. That is a nasty little guy. Of course, your Joshua tree slash yuccas. I think they're in the same family. Got some quail. Some good looking quail. But for right now, we're just gonna follow this big path up into this canyon area. I'm not sure where it goes. Typically, there's some kind of a rock shaped in something. We see a lot of rocks out here shaped like things, so not a huge big deal. <laughs> and uh, I think this is where the trail ends, kind of strange. I've only been hiking about 10 minutes. Well, that was kind of uneventful. Oh, 
Should have brought the collar. I could be wrong on that, but I think this is jojoba. And for those who ever wondered why these are called jumping cactus, although these aren't a teddy bear, they're a type of cholla, these little chunks will fall off and stick right into you. And they're pretty nasty. They get blown around in the wind in these piles. And if you brush up against them, these things will break off in chunks on you. You also got to watch out for these nasty little guys coming up. They got some huge spikes on them. Not quite sure where this trail was supposed to go. It looks like there's a few paths. Could be wrong. Nice shot of the valley out there. Let's go see if there's anything up in, under this overhang. There's no time you should be lucky to find some rock writings or petroglyphs, but I doubt it. Yeah, nothing here. Yeah, maybe at one time, but I ain't that crazy anymore. Heck no, dude. Well, not a whole lot to really do or look at on that trail. I'm not really sure where it was supposed to go. We're not in a really popular part of the park anyway. Which is kind of nice because that means there's not a lot of people around. So it's pretty quiet out here other than being a little breezy. Yeah, so apparently it was just a short half mile loop here to look at the plants and rocks and stuff of the area. Well, we're going to make this hike back a little more fun, do some free hiking, maybe get a little aerial of the camp from the top of these rocks. Almost looks like these were stacked on purpose, but they weren't. <laughs> Those are some nasty little guys right there. Always watch for your snakes in the bushes. Let's see what's over here. Yeah, it gets a little dense through here. We'll skip that. We'll go straight up the mountain. Yeah, we'll cut back through here. down there. And we're right back to camp from here. Well, kind of a chill little hike. Nothing crazy. Kind of nice to get about an hour's worth of exercise instead of sitting around, I guess. Winds are steadily picking up today, but I think we may get lucky. I think we're in a good spot down in this uh, canyon. I think we're getting blocked by a lot of the wind, so hopefully we have a good evening here. We're not getting blown away. And the last camp dinner, we're going to do some chicken burritos, add a little of this green chili, some of this salsa, some spices, we're going to put some cabbage in there, and some avocado. This camp stove does pretty good, even in the wind. 
chicken's almost ready. But definitely pretty windy today. We had some pretty crazy gusts earlier. Probably in the 40 mile an hour range. Almost forgot our rice. And of course now we are battling the wind again. <laughs> All right, we got chicken, cabbage, avocado, rice, burritos. Pretty good, just like Chipotle. Except <laughs> our wind blowing everything away here. Last burrito gets a little toast. Just like Taco Bell, huh? <laughs> the official desert gear. And yes, that is an authentic Clint Eastwood poncho. <laughs> I think it's going to get pretty crazy tonight. Why am I in the back of my truck? Well, it got so windy yesterday that my tent got completely filled with sand. So I had to dust everything off, throw it in the bed of the truck, and sleep back here. Oh man, I don't know if you can hear in that video, but these winds were absolutely insane. And my little tent's mostly mesh. And uh, I don't know if it's getting older or what, but the silt in there was absolutely insane. So I had to abandon the tent. Yeah, that was a pretty rough night. I had the, not the greatest sleep. Oh, now it's time to pack up and head on home. In a couple of weeks, I'll definitely be back with the trailer again. That's for sure. We'll see everybody next trip.